only got the third ghoul before his fifth fiend, so, yeah. <clears throat> and don't forget your third ziggurat, kids. I've been forgetting my freaking third zig all the time lately. I don't know why. I've just been retarded about it. Um, so, y with a level, with a quick level three, he knows the orc's been power creeping, otherwise the orc would have been on his ass. He decides to do the smart thing and go push the orc, uh, to uh, do a number of things. Either stop the orc from just creeping the whole map, uh, and you see the orc's already got souped up items, he, he's crept a lot of random shit. Uh, trying to stop the orc from creeping the whole map, or just slowing his, uh, the orc's tier two stuff down. Um, uh, either noble attempts, however, if you notice, the Blade Master is just doing ridiculous damage right now. So this is kind of a double-edged sword in the sense that, ha, jack the ending, so. This is kind of a double-edged sword in the sense that, while yes, you can screw the orc pretty hard, it's very easy to lose fiends, as you just saw Ser do. So, I mean, he's not, these guys aren't like Ted versus Lin or anything, but they're both pretty damn good players by my measure, so, uh, and, and you'll notice here that as soon as the Shadow Hunter with full mana that's like, what, four, four hexes or something like that, ridiculous, there was no way that, that he was going to get out of there, uh, in one piece. He would have lost one or two fiends, maybe even three for Christ's sake, so he did the smart thing and just TP'd out, cut his losses. He, he canceled the Spirit Lodge and got a grunt kill at the expense of a fiend and two cup of coils, so, uh, that was the smart thing to do. You can't, try to confront the orc second hero without your own. Um, but you notice he went, once again, very quick tier 3, uh, and, and he prioritized tier 3 and his lich before putting up the slaughterhouse. Uh, you don't really need, like, statues right away or anything. Um, fiends are you know, pretty beefy, so they, they can survive. But he's going to grab his lich, and uh, as soon as you got that lich out, even though he's down a fiend, which he is replacing... Uh, He's a, now got a chance to actually fight against the orc. Frost armor is just a beautiful thing. I just... I would bone frost armor if it was a chick. <clears throat> you know what? No. I would bone frost armor if it was a dude. That's how beautiful frost armor is. No, I'm not gay. But, uh, you know, I'm gay for frost armor. Anyway, let's talk about something important. How about the uh, the HP item on the Death Knight? Um, I kind of thought about this for a while, whether it would be better to put like that periapt on the Death Knight or the Lich. Uh, and you, you see he picks up an Invuln Pot. You see, when you don't have any sort of protection items on your Death Knight, like a, a potion, it's far too easy for the orc to just right-click it, ensnare it, right-click it, hex it, right-click it. And you just take so much damage and very likely lose your Death Knight. So um, he went ahead and kept that on the Death Knight, which, which is, may well be the, the safer choice, even though it's it's very true that uh, the Lich can die just as easily to Hex, uh, the Hexing of the Death Knight. But, you know, better lose the Lich than the Death Knight, right? So, you know, you, you can kind of make the call on that. If you still got a TP, then maybe you can, you can put the item on the Lich and keep that safer. But you'll see... Um, how he dealt with the Blade Master Harass there, and I know a lot of people hate that Blade Master Harass, but you just gotta remember that at least the Blade Master is not leveling, right? I mean, the Shadow Hunter is, yeah. you know, the Shadow Hunter is, and the Shadow Hunter can creep by himself, and you you have to have the Death Knight with the Lich. Yeah, it sucks. No, it's not really fair, but eh, just deal with it. It's not it's not that terrible. With the Blade Master Harass, just get dust, and and the one thing I hate about this game is that Sarah does not really get like shades nearly fast enough. Um. I don't think he ever gets them, actually, which really pissed me off, but I, I am a hyper-advocate of going shades uh, as quickly as possible. I know it's harder with fiends, because you only have, like, three ghouls, and a lot of times you have to pull them off to fight, as you'll see later in this game, but it, it makes it so easy to deal with the Blade Master Ass. But just, you know, on the important camps, if you're killing, like, an important creep, and you know the Blade Master's going to be there, just go ahead and pop a coil on it if you don't have dust or anything. If you have dust, kill, kill it, or dust when the thing you're trying to kill is at, like, 200 to 300 hit points left, because, you know, it's too easy for a level 3 Blade Master that's stacked to uh, start leveling. So you notice the orc just threw up an expo. Pretty common timing for this. Um... You can't really ignore it, but you don't have, like, a superior army at this point. It's one of those other things that's not really fair, in my opinion, where the orc can expand and still have an equal fighting force with you. Uh, but go ahead and look at the orc's heroes. He's got 3-3, three, three, and the undead effectively has 3-1, uh, though he did get a third hero, so I guess 3-1-1. One, one. Uh, that's common. I mean, that, that happens all the time, because you can't split the lich off to creep by himself. So you just kind of have to deal with that, and... Uh, 
understand that the orc is going to have a level 3 shadow hunter or torn chieftain and you're not going to have that level 3 hero. So now that he's got orb and a statue and a third hero though, uh, the undead does have a bit of an army advantage at this point, especially because the orc tacked a very quick tier 3 uh, in order to get those goodies. I can't, I think he used the, the doom expand item, you know, the one that makes him go super fast, but I can't remember. Um... The, the, now, I, I'll talk about the hero choices for the undead in a minute, but we're about to have a battle here, and I want to talk about um, I want to talk about the micro. So pretty much, you're in. You have to be very stingy with your impales, but when you have an opportunity to get like three quarters of his army as he just did, you got to do with that. Um, what you're kind of trying to do here is just cut down his DPS. Uh, so, like, you, you can't really just expect to focus the Blade Master. Don't go after the Blade Master. Notice he's just using his mana to keep his army alive, his coil and his frost armor, and now his Nova to deal damage. And he's just trying to cut down the Orc's army, because once the Orc's army's out of the way, then he can right click the Blade Master with Tri Hero, and the Blade Master can't just stand around and do tons of damage. So, now that the Orc's army is gone, now he's right click at the blade master. The blade master now can't stay and fight anymore because that he he's not like just soaking up hits while the army does damage. Once you cut down the orc army, then you can go after the blade master. Um, and and don't be afraid to push when you feel you have an advantage. Uh, I, I've heard straight from from Fav's mouth that one of the reasons he thinks Ted is so good versus orc is he always pushes when he has like some form of food advantage or tech advantage or hero advantage. Uh, he, he that that's one of the keys to beating orc is you don't have a lot of opportunities to press an advantage so anytime you've got an advantage you need to shove it up his ass until he starts crying like a baby and that's what just happened he got an advantage just a tiny little advantage and he chiseled it knocked it into the orc and he's just screwed over this expo really hard but now that the blade master's healed up he's got an army coming he knows there's two kodos if those two kodos had eaten two fiends the reason he TP'd out so fast is those two Kodos had eaten two fiends apiece, even though one of them still had a fiend in it, but whatever. That his army would have been cut down so much, he couldn't have won the fight anymore. He would have had damage output to win the fight, and so he'd have had to TP out then, but two fiends short. So it was a very smart TP. He screwed over the expo, he did what he needed to. Bam, he's out. So, uh, okay. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. The Blade Master, the time you want to focus the Blade Master is when you know you can fuck him up. And I don't just mean you can put damage on him, I mean fuck him up. Kill that motherfucker or put him in the red and get his ass out of there. If you waste hits on the Blade Master, it, it's just like uh, when, when the Blade Master is attacking your Death Knight in the early game. Um, you run the Death Knight in circles while the Fiends just deal damage on him. If you're attacking the Blade Master, and he's got Spirit Link and uh, and Heal Wave and an Infoam Pot, then you're just wasting DPS that could go to the rest of his army while his whole army is beating the shit out of you. It's generally a better idea to go for the army, cut down his army's DPS, then go for the Blade Master, because the Blade Master does a ton of damage, but he doesn't have a lot of HP. It's the Spirit Link and the items and the Shadow Hunter that keeps him alive. Remember that. Cut down his army's DPS, then you can go for the Blade Master. Okay. Now, take a look at this. Notice that he's not just running willy nilly into the army. Right now, I don't. He doesn't really have like a huge army advantage. He's got 53 food. There's 58. The orc has a bigger like food count. But notice that he's waiting, picking his positioning. You can't run into the orc's army, 